This is to uh, Gold Dust. But, um, in the mid '90s, when you first came into the WF, like a lot of what you were doing was really like boundary pushing and controversial and edgy. But it still had a PG rating. But when you came back during the Attitude Era, it seemed like WWE didn't really make full use of the TV 14 rating with what you could do with your character as opposed to some of the stuff you were doing in the, like 95 with like Scott Hall and stuff like that. Was there a real conscious decision to not go really over the top with it or did it just pan out like that? Well, it was crazy back then as everybody knows and it was pushing boundaries and uh, it got to the point where I think Vince just wanted to pull it back so he pulled it back. I didn't understand because I wasn't behind the scenes, you know, and I was frustrated. So I ended up getting fired, you know, because I had a bad attitude. Okay, you're next. Anyone else? Put your hand up. We've got a gentleman over there. Um, morning, guys. Um, afternoon. Ted, this one's for you. Your son isn't really being pushed for the WWE. Why is that? I'm sorry. Your son isn't being pushed for WWE at the moment. Why? That's a good question. I'd like to know too. <laughs> so what everybody else that produces the show. So I can't answer the question. He did well with it. Has nothing to do with his ability. As well, his brother is also not getting that. Yeah, he's doing it. Cody is over with uh, Damien at the moment. So. And he's been pushed a bit more for TV. Yeah. So. It's a real sore subject in my home, so I don't really try to, I won't say too much. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hang on, do you know who uh, his first victory in WWE on the road was against? You. Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> so maybe that's why he's not getting a push, because Tommy Dreamer's not uh, I make everyone look good. Okay, then another question just back here. Hi right, guys, uh, this is for each of you. Uh, yeah, I thought you were talking about this. Who's your favorite person to work with, your favorite opponent? Favorite person to work with, I'm going to have to say Akira Tozawa is my favorite person to work with. He's very, very good. Yeah, I tell you. Uh, there's this mask guy, I don't know if you guys heard of him. Uh, El Generico, he's pretty good. Um, and that question is asked to me all the time. I've loved this business since I'm nine years old. I could probably tell you people I don't like to wrestle more than guys who don't. I like to wrestle. Every day I'm out there, I'm living my dream. And uh, I mean, I've been blessed to work with some of the best. So I, I don't have a favorite. I, mean, I guess my least favorite was Vladimir Kozlov. <laughs> and I had to wrestle him three segments on a, you know, ECW taping. And I would kick him and punch him as hard as I could. And he would say, good, good, more, more. I was like, how do I hurt him? <laughs> I'm a friend like Tommy for that. There's so many guys that contributed to my, uh, to my becoming a, a good wrestler. Uh, you know, before my prime, the guys that really grew me, the guys like Perry Funk and Dick Murdoch and Vincent uh, Harvey Race and those guys. I love working with those guys because that's where I learned it. Hard work, but uh, and like Tommy, I, I've got those guys that I just absolutely hate to work with. Number one on that list would be Virgo. He's <laughs> 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 great manager, he's a horrible wrestler. Uh, and doesn't like being the ultimate idiot, the warrior. <laughs> My favorite the enforcer, Double A Arn Anderson. Hands down. That's so much fun. I mean, he taught me so much. The worst was Ahmed Johnson. <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. Okay, who's next? What question? Hey, you got the rat the very good. Hi, I love the question. Have you seen the Hulk Hogan sex tape? That's so heavy to raise the points. I saw it. I thought it was adequate. 
I haven't seen it, but my buddy bought a poster of the Hulk Hogan sex tape online. So every day when I wake up, I have to see Hulk Hogan a advertisement for a sex tape. And it reminds me how well he's doing. So thank you. And you chose to put the poster on. No, my buddy. Uh, <laughs> I'll keep my boyhood dreams of the Hulkster still alive. So. No comment. <laughs> next question. Okay, next question. Here we go. Uh, Goldust, um, what are the chances of seeing you versus Cody anytime soon in WWE? WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania 30? Yeah. Yeah. What about SummerSlam? I'd say what I can get at this point. It's going on three years. If it doesn't happen this year, I'm going to quit. It's, it's clear people want to see it. I mean, the pop you got. The but I just don't think Vince wants to see it. Mm. And Vince, for whatever reason, doesn't see money in it. I do, personally. We haven't had a good brother versus brother feud in a while. Owen, Brett, the Hardys. I think it's time. It's story driven. It's not your main event match. But it's got a good story. So we'll see. Okay. Got the next question over here. Uh, Goldust, you worked for WWE backstage. You worked a lot with the Divas. Um, how do you feel looking at the, the WWE Divas division these days? And if you were given free reign over it tomorrow, what would be the first things you would do? I put some time into their matches a little bit, give them some more time because they get the shit into the stick all the time, you know. If they're going out there and they have their schedule for seven or eight minutes, they get cut to three, and it sucks for them. Because we've got some talented girls, just like, uh, you know, TNA's got talented girls. I mean, they're just not being utilized properly. Okay, anyone else? Go? There we go. Why is it people at the end of the room team they're not Uh, my question's for Kevin. Um, you and Chris Travis have a good bit of build up for this match tonight. Is it all fan server or is it not personal between you and Travis for tonight? Uh, it wasn't personal until today. I lost a friend this week, so I stepped away and, you know, I was trying to mourn, and he stayed on me. So tonight I'm going to rip his fucking throat out. <laughs> okay, okay, there you go. Hey, Tommy, my question for you. Um, do you think you should have actually beat Raven in his supposedly last ECW match, or do you think you should have not? I fought it for a long time because I kind of knew he would uh, come back, but Paul was uh, very adamant that I beat him. So that's kind of why we did it. Okay. okay, the next question is right here. Yeah, this is just for all of you. I was just wondering who was excluding Vince McMahon, who's the, been the best promoter you've worked for and also the worst promoter you've worked for? Uh, Can I move yet? Best promoter? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's not really a promoter, but he had a double to the juggle case, and Paul's he's my favorite. I can't say that. Uh, I don't really have a worst. I have. I don't have all these horrible stories that other guys have. Luckily, so I, I don't really have one actually. So I have one. I don't really have one. Um, well, when you say promoter, do you mean Booker or promoter? Because they're two different things sometimes. Well, say Booker. Booker. Um, I would say Super Dragon's probably the best one I work with, and the worst one is Jim Cornette by far. <laughs> Uh, best booker, Paul Heyman. Uh, worst booker, Paul Heyman. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't have really a word. I kind of see things a lot differently than most people do. So. Uh, worst booker, probably Robert Ford. Or 
first book are Bill Watts. <laughs> Don't really have a favorite. So. Okay, anyone else got a question? This one's all of you. Um, who's got the best laugh? <laughs> yeah. The best laugh out of all of us? Yeah. <laughs> I don't laugh that much. I would say you said the best laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Prove it. You made a career out of it. All of us made a career being a free. <laughs> You guys have heard of a guy named Pac? Uh, I would have to say when I first saw the Dynamite Kid in Madison Square Garden uh, wrestle Tiger Mask, I, I was like, this stuff is unreal. But I mean, a lot of great wrestlers have you know, come from here. Um, you know, uh, my current would be William Regal, so I was like wrestling with him. So. Bulldogs, Eagle, then again, Dave Taylor. There's so many great guys here. There's a really a show my age here, but uh, I wrestled with this guy actually several times in Japan. There's only a guy named Pete Roberts. Steven Rinkle. Okay, Bills, a question? Ooh. Two over here now. This question's for Kevin. Were you happy with your world title run? Yeah, I was. I mean, I tried. I always try to be different from everybody, what everybody else has done before, and I think the title run that I had was way different from Nigel's or Joe's or Harry or ever, any champion they had before, so I was pretty happy with it. Uh, my question's for Johnny. Um, what did you think of your experiences in CZW, particularly your four way with, uh, I think it was Sammy Callahan, Joker, and I can't remember the last one, tell me the truth. I can't remember the last one either, wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who was it? Sammy, Joker, and. It was Chris Cashman. Let's just say DJ Hyde. DJ Hyde, we're saying DJ Hyde. <laughs> uh, you know, man, it was, it was a, you know, it was a, working for CZW was always an interesting experience. Uh, that was my very first taste of working for CZW. Uh, it was a very different atmosphere, a very different crowd. But uh, after that, I got to work a couple best of the best, and I got to have a really cool triple threat match. It was me versus Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole, which people seem to enjoy a lot. So I've gotten to do some cool things with the best of the best there. And uh, you know, at one time I worked DJ Hyde, apparently it was, a, you know, it was an interesting experience. So was a, I, I have no problem with CZW. Okay, any more quick questions, anyone? Back, this way? Yeah. Um, my question's for Kevin. Um, when you came back to Ring of Honor, it pretty much seemed like, particularly on pay-per-views, they just let you loose and you could say and do whatever you wanted. Was there anything that you wanted to do or say that they blocked you from doing that they didn't allow you to do? Um, I was obsessed with giving Jim Cornette an F5. And he, <laughs> had, like, it just, wouldn't happen. And he was finally taking I'm gonna give Mike an F5. Uh, when he was finally taking it off TV, instead of having me do it, they had Jay Lethal throw him over a table in the back, which I thought was uh, a terrible decision. But yeah. Okay, anyone quick uh, here we go. Other side again. Hi, 
it's just a question for Tommy, uh, Ted, and Dustin. Really, um, you've got a lot of association with the all three of you in a way with the Funk Brothers. So just some, or with Terry mainly, uh, but with the Funk Brothers, any stories of the Funk Brothers, kind of memories of them, you know, with yourself, Tommy, Ted, and Dustin, really. Uh, with Terry, he, you know, my mentor and everything. And I remember I was having a hard time trying to get over in Philadelphia and ECW, and he just pulled me aside and he said, "Be yourself." He said, you know, people will take to you. And then he also said, grow a goatee, because I was too pretty. And um, that's kind of helped me out immensely. Uh, I don't even know where, where to begin with Terry Funk. Uh, I've known Terry Funk since I was a little kid. Uh, his father and my father were very good friends. And, uh, uh, one of the reasons I I had signed a scholarship to play football at the University of Arizona, and I changed my mind to West Texas State because of my relationship with Terry Funk. Uh, uh, has mentored me in the business since day one. And uh, a lot of people look at Terry, and uh, you know, I think the younger generation remember you know, the ECW matches and everything. But if you ever saw Terry Funk wrestle when he was the NWA World Champion, he was just as good, and, if not better, than his brother. Uh, he could do it all, and uh, a real visionary guy. I, mean, uh, I remember him saying to me, this is back in the, you know, right at the beginning of my career, really, in the, in the mid to late 70s, he said, the time's going to come in wrestling when we'll be doing international tours like rock stars. And uh, nobody, everybody thought he was crazy. Here we are. So yeah, Terry's a very wise guy and a very, I've also known Terry for since I was little, and uh, he used to always call me Sonny. He still does. Hey, Sonny, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing, Sonny? He doesn't want to play Sonny anymore. But I forget which pay per view it was. It was WCW, and uh, we had a match, and he brought a chicken to the ring. He threw it, baseball threw it straight in my face. And it, hit me. it was like an HB, HEB hen or something, you know, one of those like big chicken, big rotisserie chicken. I'm drunk. I started getting salmonella poison and stuff now. I'm like, God. But Terry's the greatest guy, man. He's awesome. All right, guys, this is a question for all of you. If you could main event at WrestleMania, who would your opponent be, dead or alive, and why? Cody Rhodes, my brother, that's the only person I really, truly want to wrestle anymore. I'd probably like to wrestle with my son so I can show everybody what he can really do. Didn't you need him to wrestle an angel? Savage? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? He <laughs> made a minute. Come on. Am I the smartest person here with wrestling? Uh, I would like to say either Triple H or The Undertaker. And I would like to lose to both of them and then cry. <laughs> um, just for, because of everything we've gone through together, uh, my choice would be probably Generico. If he said that or alive, he'd definitely beat that because it'd be way easier to win that way. I'm gonna go back to my childhood and go to my boyhood dream. I'm gonna say a 60 man Iron Man match with Shawn Michaels in the main event of WrestleMania. This is what I would love to do. Okay, anyone else? Oh, we're out of there. That's what's up. I've got a question for the Ted. I just wanna ask, what, what's your personal opinion it's about the Ultimate Warrior? Because I've read some. I read some wrestlers books and they described him as being the type of person that doesn't care about anyone but himself. And that's pretty much it. If you watch the video, the uh, self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior, all the guys that were interviewed for that that uh, DVD, including me, were interviewed totally independent of one another on different days, and we cumulatively all said basically the same thing. Is that you know here's a guy who came into the business and he has charisma, had a tremendous body, uh, but I mean you saw him wrestle once, you saw him. 
unless he was in the ring with somebody who could lead him around by his nose. And there's been a lot of guys like that, but most guys like that appreciate that and, and, and uh, have a respect for the business. This guy came into our business, which I grew up in, I love, and I've loved since, uh, you know, and I have respect for it. He didn't show our business or anybody in it the respect they deserve or they deserve. That's the whole deal. Okay, anyone else? Any further questions? Yeah. It wasn't the way. It's to all of it. Um, who in developmental stages have you got your eye on when you're thinking they're going to be the next big thing? Who they're going to be huge from any company? Who who's who's next? You know, it's like you answer the question because. I'm not watching. <laughs> I'm doing other things, so I, I really, you know, I'm not that in touch as I used to be. Yeah. In developmental right now, I think uh, my favorite would be Bo Rotunda, or then uh, like uh, Husky Harris. He's different. He's got a different look. He's got a really cool gimmick down there, and if they let him keep it up when he, you know, he gets called up, it'd be really sweet. Um, on the road right now, the Shield, definitely the Shield. You said in developmental, or it could be from the Indies. That uh, I think Adam Cole is going to be gigantic one day, physically and as a star. Uh, of course I can pull. But uh, I'll touch on Dragon Gate USA and I'll say a guy who's going to be, uh, he probably won't be along uh, here for very long, but I'll say Uha Nation, who's going to be absolutely, <laughs> he'll be gone in, the, like, gone in like a year, but he is a phenomenal talent and he's, oh, he's a freak. I would say uh, Sammy Callahan and uh, Adam Cole. I wrestled both of them. They do a lot of intangibles that a lot of guys don't do you know and, and it takes years to you know get those two guys are really really good my question is for dustin when did when did the wrestlers find out what vince had bought wcw and what was his feeling backstage was you what about your job so you know what uh, that that time was uh very foggy for me as I'm uh, going on five years clean and sober. It wasn't a good time for me back then, you know what I'm saying? So it's, I don't really remember too much about it. Maybe somebody else does, but I don't. Don't look at me. <laughs> uh, my uh, question is for Tommy Dreamer. Uh, did, you prefer, did you prefer working in um, ECW on the Paul Heyman or in WWE? Obviously, you know, ECW, uh, the original ECW was, you know, the best for me, but, you know, I made a whole lot of money in the WWE, ECW. Um, creatively, the original ECW, and, and I loved it. And that, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people rip off the WWE's version just because they wanted it to be what it was. But you gotta understand it's you know, someone else's vision, and so, you know, it's, you look at any sport under a different coach, your team plays differently. But uh, creatively, that it was the best. It was groundbreaking. It changed the business. So. Okay, any more questions? Oh. Yeah. All right, uh, the question is for all of you. Um, from any era, if you could choose four guys to have on. Ultimate Survivor Series team, who would your team next be? And the second one is, what's your favourite TV show or movie and snack food to watch it with? <laughs> My favourite Survivor Series team, I couldn't really pick one. I mean, I, I was, I would have to then, you know, how about Rob Van Dam, Sabu, and Sandman just for, you know, we did it at WrestleMania. And we had really good matches, even with Sam. Um, 
my favorite television show. I watch, I have three TiVos, I watch way too much television. My favorite snack food is reduced fat free Jif peanut butter with fat free milk. I really eat pretty clean and train hard to look like this, which is very upsetting to me. But uh, yeah, I'll eat anything. And when I'm here, I really like your uh, prawn chips and uh, your, I love all your potato chips here. They're awesome. Shut up. Can this be a Survivor Series team right here? This be my okay, this is my Survivor Series team. Uh, favorite television show? I'm going to go with The Office. I love The Office. And that's a, I haven't watched the British version. I apologize to you all. I just the American version for now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the Office, Community, uh, How I Met Your Mother, Parks and Rec, uh, all shows like that. The Walking Dead. I think it's a fantastic television show. Um, those are my favorite, favorite snack food. Uh, I don't know if you guys have it over here, probably not. It's called Arctic Zero Ice Cream. It has zero uh, carbs and zero fat and zero sugar. And it, it tastes actually uh, surprisingly decent. So I'll go with that. Zero everything. It's like you're eating nothing. <laughs> you trying to give me a message here? Hey! Um, the favorite Survivor Series, well, I mean, who I would pick, I guess would be the Briscoe, Super Dragon, and Generico, because I go to war with these guys any day. And my favorite TV show is Louis. Uh, I don't even know if you have it here, Louis C.K.'s TV show, yeah. And uh, favorite snack is everything. Your favorite Survivor Series team would be Abdullah the Butcher, Stan Hansen, Richard Brody, and me. I would be totally safe with those guys. <laughs> Uh, favorite food uh, when I come to when I come to the UK I love fish and chips I just hey. so um, favorite TV show wow mm. <laughs> Monday Night Raw not <laughs> <laughs> favorite TV show I don't know that I really have one uh, what's the other what's the doctor's name no 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 the doc it, it, it's not it's not on anymore. House. House was my favorite, my favorite TV show. And uh, other than that, my favorite food would be donuts, can you tell? <laughs> you ever get swamp people over here? Yes! yes we do. Swamp people is my favorite, man. I love that one, Game of Thrones. Uh, favorite Survivor Series team? Barry Wyndham. Tommy Dreamer. Hey. Huh? No, not Double A. Let's call it Double A. Terry Funk. Okay, we've got time for one last question. So, anyone? Got, oh, we've got two. We'll, have, we'll put a bit two in. I'm just trying to help the mind that's all. Um, Initially directed at Ted, but I'm interested in all of your opinion. Who would you like to see go into the Hall of Fame next year? Randy Savage, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> he took the words right out of my mouth. Randy Savage, it's long overdue. Yeah. I would, uh, now that he's on the straight and narrow and also at being in Louisiana territory, I'd like to see maybe Jake go in there. I mean, there's a lot of wrestlers that'd be great if they were inducted, but you know how every year they induct somebody has no reason being inducted? Uh, I'd love to see Larry David be inducted, just because his speech would be amazing. What am I doing here? Uh, of course, watch a man reading sandwich, but I'm also going to say Owen Hart. I think Owen Hart is going to be Hi, this is to all of you. Um, the Undertaker is at 21 and 0. Does anybody deserve to break the streak? If so, who? Kevin Steen. <laughs> I won't say you. I don't know if anybody deserves it, but I think that if they did, and obviously, I don't know if it turned out to be Undertaker's last match, that person it seems would be made forever. 
the guy who's the one, you know? And uh, I, I mean, I think it'd be really interesting to see, but uh, it doesn't. Uh, I think Fandango should break the street. <laughs> Um, I don't. I personally feel that the streak should go undefeated forever. It would be like that undefeated NFL season. And I'd like to also add that I am undefeated in WrestleMania. I'm actually was part of a six man, so I'm a quarter and O at WrestleMania. So Undertaker, I'm coming for you. I mean, I've I've always been one. The history of our business, the way that that new talent uh, you know, gets brought to the top, is they they get the rub with the existing stars, and it's just like uh, you know when Andre did the job for Hogan at WrestleMania three and passed the torch, so to speak. I believe in that, but the Undertaker has been such a unique character, and the fact that he's gone this long with this streak, uh, I, I really think it's one of those things they should leave it as it is. And, uh, and, and, and I, I don't know if he's got another one in him. You know, he, you know, every, you know, he's, you know, the last couple of years. I mean, he's he's been hurt. He's still hurt, and he's he's, he's feeling it quite a bit now. I don't I don't know if there'll be another. One. If he does have another one, who who's going to step up? Really, is what it boils down to. Cody Rhodes or Ted? Cody's not ready. No, not for that. I mean, who's going to step up? I think the, the streak should stay what it is. You know what I'm saying? If he retires right now, it's good. Next year, you don't end the streak. You can't. You just think can't. he should have gone to 20 or now? Or just stay at 20 and retired? No, I, I like him going 21. That doesn't hurt Punk at all. Yeah, but he looked knackered last year, though, didn't he? No, man. It's, it's good. It's all good. Undertaker's the Undertaker. Okay, that is going to bring your uh, question and answer session to an end. So we've got time, but obviously if you want to get the photographs and autographs um, and the stars, they're going to be back over there by the tables. But have a big round of applause for Tony Gargano, Kevin Singh, Tommy Freeman, Teddy Biosse, and Goldust.